welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at this fantastic Alpine A110S. I've been wanting to drive this car for a while now and so far I'm absolutely loving it. Before we start the video I just want to talk about my clothing brand controllershift.com there's a link in the description below I'm wearing one of our t-shirts at the moment please head over and help support this channel by buying a sticker t-shirt a mug or all three of them if you can afford it as with the fantastic Megane Trophy R I had recently I've only got this car for 48 hours so it's very difficult to time the weather right and film a really sexy and long video so this is going to be short and sweet thankfully i have got the sunshine for a couple of hours before i talk about what i think of this car i want to rewind about three years to when the a110 so the basic a110 was released my good friend benzine ben who does a lot of work for Schmi 150 actually went out to France for the launch of this car. I think it was December 2017, and he drove one on this little circuit they got out there. And I remember he messaged me that evening to tell me how much fun this car was, and that was very unusual for Ben because he's a professional race driver. He is one of the most talented guys I know behind the wheel of a car. And although certain cars do excite him, I wasn't expecting him to have rave reviews about this. He said it was an absolute hoot. Fast forward a couple of years and Tony Lewis, TRL Deals, actually picked up his A110 about summertime last year. And I've actually driven that car around a couple of circuits, around Brands Hatch Indy, and I've driven it around Bedford. I've never driven one on the road though. Both of those cars that I'm talking about though are the base A110 that came out before this A110S. Oh, what a fantastic bit of road. <laughs> and I'd heard mixed things about this S because obviously the best thing about the base A110 was how soft it was and how pliant and well it handled with the UK roads, which are pretty bad in general. So I was expecting this to be a lot more hardcore, and it is in many ways. It has the same 1.8 litre four cylinder turbocharged engine, but the S puts out almost 40 horsepower more than the non-S, so we're talking about 290 horsepower, which is a reasonable figure, but when you factor in that this car weighs just 1,100-ish kilos, <laughs> it's insane, it really is. And it feels really, really rapid, and obviously very nimble as a result of that incredible weight figure. Such a fun little road car, really, really is thing about it is because it's so light it feels faster than you're going so you can stick at the speed limit and have fun along a road like this it's just brilliant you certainly notice that it is more stiffly sprung than the standard A110 I think the spring rates are up about 50% in this the tires are slightly bigger we've also got twice as stiff anti-roll bars in this particular car so everything's just a little bit sharper which comes in handy when you really push it into the corner like this <laughs> oh, what a brilliant little car it doesn't have a limited slip diff though i'm not missing it massively on a day like today but yesterday it was absolutely pouring with rain and you did notice that open diff that I've got at the back. Let's start with what the interior is like on this car. Well, it's pretty cool and funky. It's unmistakably owned by Renault in here. There's lots of Renault switch gear, some cheapish plastics, but the seats are really cool. And I have to say, looking around the cabin, it looks really nice. There's plenty of leather in here. And like I said, everything's kind of got a flair. It's a bit funky. There's nothing that looks 
really cheap and nasty, but just some of the plastics aren't particularly brilliant. When you consider this particular press car is just over £60,000 because it has the lightweight wheels, it has the carbon roof and a couple of other things. It's a lot of money. That, that is a top spec M2 competition DCT. So is it worth the money? What's this 1.8 litre turbocharged four cylinder engine like? I remember the first time I put my foot down in Tony's A110 on uh, Brands Hatch and I was just overwhelmed by the sound and the drama that surrounds you because obviously the engine's just behind my shoulders so when you put your foot down that's what you can hear. You can hear induction sound on soft acceleration runs and you can hear proper engine sound when you put your foot down. Revs out to about six and a half thousand, I think the red line is, but it feels and sounds like it's about eight and a half thousand. It sounds amazing. The gearbox, it's a seven speed dual clutch and it works really well actually, up and down. Again, I've seen a few people complain about the box, but I think it's actually pretty good. It does what you want it to do and it always gives you a gear when you want to go down the box again. It's just brilliant. This section of road is fantastic. <laughs> it's just perfect for this car. In terms of the brakes, well, they're incredible. They really are. They're definitely not over assisted. You have to stamp on them, but the harder you push, the harder they work. And it seems once you've got a bit of heat into them, they work really, really well. Without driving the standard car on the road, I can't really compare and tell you what the quality of the ride's like between the two cars, but I can tell you that it's certainly not uncomfortable in this car. I sat on the motorway for about an hour earlier on and it's lovely in here. Yes, you do get a bit of tire roar, a little bit of wind noise because they stripped out lots of insulation in this car. They've got to have done that to get the weight down to 1100 kilos. So you can't really complain about the fact that there is a bit more tire roar than, say, a typical two-seater sports car. What's it like compared to some of its competitors? Well, let's talk about the 4C first. I know 4C is not the most popular car in the world, but it's a fantastic little car, weighs just under a tonne, so it's over 100 kilos lighter than this. But I have to say the 4C, as exciting as it is, it also wants to kill you everywhere. This car isn't like that at all, even in this S form. It's just not. It's not as hard-nosed, it's not as hard-edged, it's compliant, it wants to work with you. TTRS, I guess, is something else at similar sort of price point. Fantastic five-pot engine, a bit muffled these days with the uh, OPF filters but TTRS is about 400 kilos heavier than this. Again, bringing it up in line with something like my M2 competition, it's just too heavy, it really is. You can't compare the two. The way this goes through corners like this, you just, you, you can't compare. That's just lightweight agility, ability, it's amazing. Another car I'd love to compare this to is the Porsche Cayman S, but unfortunately I can't get hold of any cars from Porsche UK, so I can't really compare it to that car. I'm sure the Porsche is a nicer place to sit, the infotainment system and stuff's gonna be miles better, probably a bit more practical to live with as well, but is it gonna be any more fun than this car? And is that four-pot boxer engine gonna be any more sonorous than this one? I really don't think so. In fact. I know it is and it sounds a little bit off that four pot in the Porsche. Whereas this thing, let's just remind ourselves one more time. <laughs> Listen to that, what a fantastic little engine. What do I not like about this car? Well, there are a few things as there are with all cars and you probably noticed one of them watching this video from the start cabin space. Unfortunately, at six foot four, I'm just a bit too big for this cabin. I feel like I'm really sort of haunching down. My eye line is kind of looking at the sun visor unless 
I crooked my neck and really as a proposition to live with I just couldn't with this car because it's just too small if the seats were maybe two or three inches lower then it would work but unfortunately they're not and if I sit up I literally can see very little of the road in front of me so that's that's my biggest complaint about this car next one is probably yeah practicality there's there's very little storage space in this car and especially in the cabin there's literally nowhere to put anything there's one funny little drink holder behind me which is next to completely useless because anything you put in there either won't fit or the first time you hit the brakes it comes flying out and probably smash into the infotainment screen that leads me on nicely to that which is just pretty bad if I'm being honest so confusing the way everything works in here I have only had the car two days but things like stereo control or the voice control is tragically bad so all of that's just yeah it's not great and even the aircon I've got it on its coldest setting now and halfway up in the fan it's getting warmer and warmer in here when I drive the car reasonably hard so maybe that doesn't work particularly well so I guess things that you'd typically expect to not be brilliant on a Renault are true for the inside of this car or for the electronics and the infotainment stuff of this car which is a shame does let it down a bit especially when we go back to the fact that yeah the list price of this particular car is over sixty thousand pounds and yeah i just want a little bit better quality for that kind of money but things like the wheel itself are really nice to hold um, really nice size the paddles are lovely nice big alloy paddles and they're actually attached to the steering column not the steering wheel so a bit like the italians do with alfa romeos and ferraris and stuff so yeah they're really nice the seats are actually pretty good i wouldn't say the seats are massively small for me it's just <laughs> the actual cabin itself the roof and you know the, the space we've got in here and when you're sitting next to someone else you can bash elbows a bit but can't complain about that because that's the plus point of this car it's small it's compact and it's light and so you know what can i expect in a car that is designed to be lightweight and small compact yes i am going to struggle to get in here and i'm grateful that i can at least drive it i'd love to take this up to wales for a couple of days or even in the alps or something it would just be brilliant but as i say ownership proposition i'm just a little bit too tall for this and take you out on track when I did with Tony, imagine me with a helmet here. I was literally like that while I was driving around the track, so it's an impossibility. Let's just do this one more time before I end the video. First gear. And the traction, traction, no problem. Quoted naught to 62 figure on this is 4.4 seconds, so that's only a tenth of a second quicker than the normal A110 and it feels every bit as quick as that doesn't struggle off the line in the dry as i said earlier on even with the open diff i think that's my video i feel out of breath from talking so fast i hope you enjoyed this video and yeah let me know what you think of this particular car in the comments below i'm interested to see what you think of these i really think there is a place for this in the market even at sixty thousand pounds but it's definitely an alternative and a bit like the Megane Trophy R it's one of those cars that you would have in your collection of cars if you were wealthy enough or if you lived in an amazing place like down in the Alps this would just be the perfect car to buzz around in if you're a bit shorter than I am thanks for watching guys really appreciate it remember to give us a follow on Instagram and Twitter and I'll see you at the next video cheers